the cellular level. The individual cell is the unit structure of all living things. An entire organism may consist of one cell, which is called unicellular, or many cells, which is called multicellular. In human beings and other multicellular organisms, these cells tend to be organized in specific ways. A group of like cells performing a particular function is referred to as tissue. An organ is a discrete structure composed of several different tissues. An organ system is a group of organs together performing an overall function. For example, the integumentary, musculoskeletal, nervous system, circulatory, lymphatic, respiratory, endocrine, urinary, reproductive, and digestive. The individual organism is a combination of all of these things as a discrete and separate entity. Major components of a typical animal cell. The cell membrane. The cell membrane surrounds and separates the cell from its environment. The cell membrane allows certain material to pass through it as they enter or leave the cell. Within the cell is the nucleus, which plays a central role in the cell. Information is stored in the nucleus and distributed to guide the life processes and functions of the cell. Within the nucleus is the chromatin material, made up of DNA. At the time of cell division, this chromatin material is aggregated into individual structures known as chromosomes. Each chromosome has a set of specific genes, the basic units of heredity, which are passed from parents to their children, which determine all the physical and chemical characteristics of the individual. The nucleus also contains a nucleolus, which is a structure that creates ribosomes. Ribosomes are granular particles which makes proteins. They are often referred to as the protein factories of the cell. They are composed mainly of nucleic acids, which helps make the proteins needed for many cell functions. They can float freely in the cell, or they can attach to the endoplasmic reticulum, protoplasm. The major substance of the cell is known as protoplasm. It is a combination of water and materials that have dissolved in the water. Outside the cell nucleus, protoplasm is called cytoplasm. Inside the cell nucleus, protoplasm is called nucleoplasm. Organelles. Within the cytoplasm, certain structures are called organelles. Organelles means little organs. These little organs have unique jobs to perform. The organelles include structures such as the endoplasmic reticulum, various kinds of vacuoles, the Golgi apparatus, mitochondria, and the centrales. Let's go through these one by one. The endoplasmic reticulum is a network of cavities and canals. There are two parts of the endoplasmic reticulum, the rough ER, which has ribosomes attached to it, and the smooth ER, which doesn't have ribosomes attached to it. It resembles a circulatory system for an individual cell. It helps in the transfer of materials from one part of the cell to the other. For example, the proteins that were synthesized by the ribosomes leave the endoplasmic reticulum in the form of vesicles. These vesicles are then transported to the Golgi apparatus, which is a portion of the endoplasmic reticulum which aids in the final preparation of the proteins, transforming them into forms that the cells need. Mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell. The mitochondria provide energy wherever it is needed to carry out the cellular functions. They recharge adenosine diphosphate molecules, also known as ADP. These are molecules with two phosphates attached to the end of it, di meaning two. This has little energy. They transform it to adenosine triphosphate, which is also known as ATP by attaching the third phosphate, tri meaning three. Now you have high energy, which can be used for all the cell functions. The more energy a cell needs, the more mitochondria it will contain. Centrolase. 
Centrolis help in the process of cell division by dividing the chromosomes and creating two sets for cell division. Lysozymes are membranes which contain enzymes that can help digest bacteria that made its way through the cell membrane. They can also digest old or damaged intracellular structures, which is why they are known as the garbage collectors. Vacuoles. Vacuoles are spaces or cavities within the cytoplasm. They serve as storage for food, water, or whatever the cell may need to survive. I would like to thank Dr. James Ross for allowing me to use information from his Human Anatomy and Physiology program. You can click here to find out more. All right guys, I really hope you like this video. If you want to see more anatomy videos, give this video a thumbs up, and also please subscribe to the channel. You can subscribe by clicking right here. See you guys in the next video. Love you.